When the initial planning and mapping of the Mara Conservancy was done, the centrally located Pardamat Conservation Area was identified as a suitable resettlement zone for locals who had given up their land in areas such as Mara North, Olare, Motorogi, Olchoro, among others. With the coming of people into Pardamat, there was an increase in the shrinking of space. Therefore, uh, congestion of people, wildlife, and, li and the livestock started uh, rising up. As a result, there was an increase in human wildlife conflict, uh, loss of wildlife to fencing that has been escalating in this area, and all those kind of uh, effects. Fences are not just meant to mark territory in these vast plains, but for livestock keepers, they act to keep away wild animals. However, conservationists argue that these fences also work against wildlife conservation by blocking wild animal corridors. A drive through Pardamat shows how widespread fencing has become and more people can easily afford high tensile fencing barbed wire and electrical fences. And now, wild animals are falling victim to these fences. I found just an animal hanging in the, in the fence because he, he was not able to penetrate inside, so he lose its life, her life. Elephants here have also had it rough as the hilly terrain of Pardamat area, an important animal corridor and maternity zone for Africa's largest land mammal, is also affected. The member of the Big Five has also rubbed the locals the wrong way. There was an, an old man who was walking in between two electric fences one day and uh, he happened to have met an elephant who was also walking in between the same two uh, electric fences and neither of them had the opportunity to escape and they met uh, on the way. Uh, the old man was knocked. Uh, lucky enough he survived and uh, he was airlifted to Bomet for, for, for treatment and is now survived. he survived. A study by Danish and Kenyan scientists has also pointed out the flaws of humans erecting fences and their impact on wildlife migration. Across the ecosystem, you'll notice that there's a lot of fencing. You know, over the past three, four years, the fencing has grown. You know, it's tripled the numbers, the number of fences across the ecosystem. So that has a lot of repercussions, not just on wildlife, but also for people and livestock. You know, loss of access to common you know, resources such as rivers and salt lakes. So you can't take your cows through my land because it's fenced. So you know, what does that mean for the people? What does that mean for the wildlife? And also you'll see a lot of especially wildebeest hanging on, on the fences. So they try and cross and they you know, get strangled by the fences. So it is a really big problem. Through remote sensing techniques, the findings of the study that covered the period starting from 1985 all through to 2017 show a steady increase in the concentration of fences. Looking at the images for 2017 that were produced by Mamase, another group doing research in the Mara, you can see the fences keep growing and the red spots are becoming more and more across the ecosystem and this is a danger. I mean, if you look at where they are located, along rivers, near the road, in areas that are critical for wildlife, so that should be a warning to Mara managers and researchers and conservationists across the country that something needs to be done urgently. Besides keeping cattle, the Maasai have also tagged along large flocks of sheep and goats. While this has worked with vast tracts of land and rotational grazing, a looming threat to the Mara ecosystem is beginning to emerge with a new breed of sheep now becoming a danger to the greenery that supports life here. Due to the growing populations, human population, we've also realized the growing number of uh, shops, that's the sheep and goats. 
And the worst thing here is that the community are now changing from the Maasai red sheep, which also graze like cattle initially, to the doppers. And the serious thing about the doppers is that they actually don't move. So they graze in one particular area and they even remove all the grass up to the last bit, up to the, up to the roots. So that is actually one of the major serious problems that is actually affecting the environment and the landscape in the Mara. The issues that will soon emerge and have started being noticed by researchers across the Mara that along the boundaries of the conservancies there's intensive grazing. So we need to figure out a solution. What will you do with the sheep and goats in the Mara? There's a really huge number of them and the pressures that they're putting on the ecosystem are starting to be felt and even more so now because of the fencing, because everyone wants to protect their own piece of land, but because of how the sheep and goats eat, you, you really don't want your sheep and goats eating all your grass and you know, leaving nothing for the cows. So there's a lot of pressure. This breed is a cross between the blackhead passion sheep and the dorset horn sheep. The result is an aggressive, fast-growing feeder, loved by herders but dreaded by conservationists. You know, a survey was done and a paper written by Ogutu in 2016 and it showed that Naro County has the highest number of sheep and goats. But within the conservancies and the grazing plants for the conservancies only include cattle. So sheep and goats are not allowed to graze inside conservancies and they're also not supposed to graze inside the reserve though we know that happens at times. So what happens is that there's a lot of pressure on the pasture that's not inside conservancies and you find the sheep and goats eating especially along the edges of the conservancy. In the meantime, the Mara continues to thrive. Stakeholders confident with the hope that through continued community and external engagement, science, culture and business, the Mara will be good business. We're looking at the sustainable commercial livestock enterprises, which also will be able to work in tandem with tourism. We are also looking at uh, bid work projects, we are looking at beekeeping harvesting, we are also exploring the visibility of carbon credits. So there are a number of options that we are exploring now as an organization together with the Mara stakeholders. And all this is a way of sustaining the conservancies in the Mara. Wa mama wale target yao, vision yetu ni ule mama mwenye alikuwa na vision tuseme ya kona, alikuwa na ana, alikuwa na sola, amepata hiyo sola. Masa vision yetu ni wale wa mama wate, wale ile maoni yao wa mavision yao, by five years kila moja atakuwa mefiki ya vision yake. At the same time, the animals continue traversing the expansive Mara. With the residents, a good number now, working as rangers and in other capacities in the conservation chain. So conservancies are acting as a grass bank and uh, the landowners are really very happy about uh, the conservancies are now really keeping grass for them so that they can be able to get their livestock uh, throughout the bad times. So grass is one of the major benefits. They are also getting bursaries. So a number of school kids are also benefiting from the bursary schemes which is a deduction from the landowners payments on a monthly basis. Now everyone hoping that their overall role in the world famous Mara will in little ways preserve and grow bigger one of East Africa's most recognizable gems in tourism circles.
Mark Namaswa, KTN News, Mara Conservancies, Narok County.